Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And here I have a great article for you guys from Seeking Alpha. I will leave a link to it in the description. But to make you guys aware, this article is behind a premium paywall. I was able to, to catch a screenshot right before the pop-up came up. So we'll discuss that in today's video. So yesterday's video, if you guys watched it, was about Verizon's fixed wireless access and that you know a good amount of that growth is coming from enterprise so in this case what's being discussed in this article that u.s cellular's spectrum assets could further boost fixed wireless access growth for t-mobile so i wanted to to discuss that in this video so a good problem to have is demand right you, you're growing you're adding tons of users onto the network but that you know good problem could turn into a bad problem if you're not proactive and listening to t-mobile recently and looking at the strategy and and the plans that they put forth at the analyst day during during the merger talks on how they would integrate and, and build out the network when talking about a uh, fixed wireless access none of it had any plans on adding additional capital to build specifically for fixed wireless access not a single plan it's all coming from a extra capacity spectrum model so that's why seeking alpha is discussing that if they were to purchase us cellular spectrum assets it could boost fixed wireless access growth well into the future. And of course, they're also taking into consideration that T-Mobile still has C-band and DoD to deploy. But even that should get saturated relatively quickly if you look at T-Mobile's growth trajectory. They're not slowing down, right? If you look at the, the market today and, and, and the, the deals that T-Mobile's putting into the market, their go-to market strategy... It's all with price and value. That's what they're leading with. They don't lead with a, with a premium product. They're leading with price and, and lots of customer acquisition. Four iPhones for free for $25 a line. That's a huge cost to bury to get that customer to switch. <clears throat> so you got you to gotta keep that in mind when you're, when you're talking about T-Mobile. So I wanted to read off the, the brief summary here and then further discuss. T-Mobile's lead in 5G and availability of C-band spectrum frequencies through the acquisition of Sprint put it in a position of competitive strength. And they are competing, right? They're, they're going into rural environments now with network. They, they have still the fastest network in the country. They're, they're continuously growing the, uh, the, the brand perception they're getting better deals on the enterprise side. They're getting partnerships and sponsorships like the Formula One race that's taking place. So it's, it's, it's working, right? It's definitely working in favor of T-Mobile. However, growth has been sluggish last year and estimates are worse for 2023, right? So the stock is, is not really where it should be or where, where it needs to be. That's that's pretty much what they're what they're saying here. The company is growing, but the stock is, is is relatively flat, and it's not going where some analysts are predicting. Some have like a two hundred dollar price target, so it's not going where the, where they would think it's it's going, and and that's what they're talking about here. Thus, the potential acquisition of U.S. cellular spectrum assets to boost up its home broadband fixed wireless product could lead to a 7.7% increase in T-Mobile's revenue growth. And then even below, you can kind of see that they have a targeted uh, stock price of $162. So today, T-Mobile stock is at $147.71. Um, and it's it's been kind of up and down a little bit here and there, but it's not really where analysts and price targets have been predicting. So I will say this. The assets of U.S. Cellular from the Spectrum side would be would be a huge deal, but you got to keep in mind, 
right? There's positives and there's negatives. The assets that they would get are not national. They would not get a, another chunk of C-band on a national scale because U.S. Cellular did not operate on a national-wide basis. They were only regional. So that has to be, that has to be looked at and taken into consideration when you make articles like these. And maybe in the full article, they did discuss that. But I wanted to bring that point up. So I don't think it makes any difference in the top 100 markets where T-Mobile competes the most aggressive on, on fixed wireless access today. And I know that's transitioning into the rural environment after them hitting 300 million pops. But the most customers are still in the top 100 markets. So the U.S. cellular asset from a spectrum perspective would have absolutely zero added benefit in the top 100 markets. U.S. cellular just doesn't operate in those markets. So there would be no spectrum gain in those markets. So that's one, right? T-Mobile, if they want to further grow the fixed wireless access base beyond the 7 to 8 million if they want to have like a real competitive impact in the top 100 markets, they're just going to have to build. They're going to have to take capital and they're going to have to build for fixed wireless access. Now, which makes more sense in the future? That's up to them, right? Do we, and, and Verizon may have to ask themselves that as well. Do we plow billions of dollars back into the wireless infrastructure where our mobile users are not going to fill up that capacity and we sell fixed wireless access to more people? Or do we pivot and just, just build fiber? Which is going to be the, the, better, the, better, uh, the better investment? And T-Mobile is sort of signaling that it's fiber. T-Mobile still hasn't pivoted from their current fixed wireless access strategy. To get to the 7 to 8 million by 2025 is clearly coming from the extra capacity. That's it. T-Mobile is not investing a single dime on any additional capacity for fixed wireless access. It's all coming from the network. They have yet to announce a separate millimeter wave strategy. If, if that ever comes to fruition, I don't think so, but it's not yet officially announced. Right, they're not building, they're not going to build C band and DOD because of fixed wireless access. No, they're building that for wireless to gain additional capacity. And then, if there is more capacity available after running the models and looking, okay, with, with this amount of increase in wireless traffic, can I still support fixed wireless access? Then they approve a few more uh, houses on the sector. But that's it. They are not investing X amount of billions of dollars to build infrastructure for fixed wireless access. T-Mobile is just simply not doing that. So could that be a problem in the future? And I think T-Mobile kind of sort of understands that. That even though they're using extra capacity, that model a few years from now could bring down a sector to its knees just from the increase of FWA usage. And that's active users. Even though that, that neighborhood has been taken off the list of, of approvals, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the users that are still in that neighborhood are going to continuously increase their usage each year. They're going to add more devices. They might get security cameras if they didn't have them before. All of that adds usage back onto the sector. So that's something that T-Mobile has to closely monitor. How do they proceed moving forward? Are the U.S. cellular assets a big deal? Yes, but only in the parts where they exist. So I don't know if that number, that 7.7% increase in T-Mobile's revenue, if that's necessarily, you know, that high once it's all said and done, if they do go after those assets. Is it good to be to have more spectrum in that rural environment? Yes, because that gives you more of a competitive um, advantage because Verizon has 200 megahertz of C-band 
contiguous in those parts. So that's that's something that's just not going to go unnoticed. Over the next 24 to 36 months, Verizon is going to steadily build C-band in those parts. They're going to put 200 contiguous megahertz of C-band on air. That's massive capacity coming to those rural areas that never had that before. Did T-Mobile get there first? Of course. But in the huge parts of, of those white spaces, they simply can't compete there. You know, there's still auction 108 coming that'll boost that, you know, those spectrum holdings. But <clears throat> nothing anywhere close to 200 megahertz of N41. So with, with the U.S. cellular asset, right, maybe it gets them over 200, but, you, you know, you have to aggregate and stuff. But it would give them somewhat of a competitive advantage. But like I said, I don't know if it gets them that high of a revenue because it's not national, like I said. And in those parts, you got to be price conscious. You can't go too high. You can't go too low. There is new competition. So if you go too high, right, it'll give Verizon an opportunity to step in. AT&T is going to present home in the air in those areas. Maybe some cable players and fiber players will go out that way with the with the rural broadband fund. So it's going to be interesting to see there's more competition coming to rural. Um, also going to be interesting to see where U.S. Cellular goes if they if they are going to end up selling. We don't know yet. This is a speculative article. Keep that in mind. But just from that perspective, just to close out the video, um, T-Mobile is in no, you know, immediate danger or, or, or anything like that. You know, nobody's signaling that. They're doing fine. Capacity is solid. Even though they're adding 500,000 fixed wireless access customers a quarter, they continue getting faster on the network. The Ookla reports show that. Root Metric shows it. Open Signal shows it. They continue speeding up. So they're doing this as, as smartly as they possibly can. But we, we still have to look at future outlook. We got to look at next year. The year after, are they going to go aggressive on C-band DOD or are they going to hold back? They don't have those assets on the nationwide basis as well. So that's just something to monitor and we'll see how they proceed. Maybe they pivot completely towards fiber leasing it versus fixed wireless access in the future. It's all up in the air. But for now, just wanted to discuss this article. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Maybe some of you are paying for the premium. So make sure you guys stay tuned for more. Like, share, subscribe, follow the social media outlets. This is Tyrone with Tech Life. See y'all in the next one. Peace.